Number one problem in marriage. Our first commandment deals with the number of our first commandment deals with the number one problem in marriage, a setback that crops up in the garden with Adam and Eve. Since then, we've seen it continue all the way to the 21st century. What is it? Selfishness. Current research demonstrates that today people are even more unashamedly, unashamedly into themselves than ever before. Millennials constantly place themselves at the center of self-created digital stages. A Pew Research poll found that 55% have posted a selfie on a social media site. For example, I know a young woman who was spending, was speeding, as she was pulled over, she took a selfie video and tweeted it out to her followers. She also got a ticket for texting and driving since she was delayed in handling over her license so she could digitally post her reaction to the cop. I cannot make this stuff up. Selfies may not be the primary problem in marriages, but the root of selfie is an obsession with self that is a that is called selfishness and remains the number one problem in your marriage and in mine we all suffer from the sin of selfishness it lies at the heart of nearly every marital problem my close friend gary thomas says this in his book sacred marriage any situation that caused me to confront my selfishness has an enormous spiritual value. I and I slowly began to understand that the real purpose of marriage may not be happiness as much as it is holiness. I could not agree more with Gary and that's why our first commandment of marriage states, thou shalt, shalt be selfless. That's about as simple as and blunt as I can get. Still, I'm convinced that if every couple walking the aisle took seriously this single principle, a welcome oasis of marital bliss would, spend, would spread across this nation. Divorced lawyers would have to take a number at the unemployment office. I'm beginning to think I should incorporate these exact words into the marriage ceremony. Thou shall be completely selfless. First, the first commandment calls us to do in marriage what the Apostle Paul instructs all of us to do. Do nothing out of selfish ambition <clears throat> or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Sound easy, doesn't it? But our number one problem, selfishness, takes it tough. Um, selfishness makes it tough. Perhaps we can take some positive steps towards incorporating this commandment into our marriages if we look at the problem of selfishness as a disease. We are born with the disease. If we, if you are around a newborn baby from any length of time, it becomes obvious. Babies can work themselves into a fit of rage if their needs are not properly met. Maturing into a precious toddler does little to control the disease. Come between a two-year-old and anything he wants, and you can test the theory. Psychologi uh, psychologists say that this stage is called ergocentricity. The short definition used by psychologists is meanness. The Webster Dictionary defines egocentricity this way, limited in outlook or concern to one's own activities or needs. 
being self-centered or selfish. This disease theory comes from Swiss psychologist Jean Piggott theory about cognitive child development. Cognitively, young children are simply not able to see the world from another person's perspective. The theory can be tested by holding the teddy bear in front of a young child. With the bear facing him, the toddler sees eyes, nose, mouth. If asked to describe what you are seeing, he will describe the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, showing him what you actually saw. The backside and tail will do nothing to change his opinion. Hold the teddy bear facing him again and ask him what he thinks you are looking at. And he will again describe exactly what he has seen. Albert Einstein complimented Piggott's theory by explaining Piggott's discovery is so simple. Only a genu uh, a genius could have thought of it. The the theoretically, we, we grow out of egocentricity and enter another stage of development. However, I have counseled hundreds of married couples who seem to relieve their egocentricity stage on a ba daily basis. Consequently, I believe it's more than a development stage. It is a fact, it is in fact a disease of the heart. Symptoms of selfishness. If you were not, if you're not sure about this disease, look for the symptoms. Most illnesses reveal visual, physical symptoms. Selfish is no different. Its symptoms are as obvious as those of chicken pox. Do as a little self-diagnosis as you consider each of the symptoms listed below. Ask yourself, to what degree has this symptom of selfishness infected me? The four symptoms are immaturity, time choices, in insensitivity, and stubbornness. We will continue.